Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the tire axis system, which will help us define what our forces and moments acting on our tires are, and it's really the essential first step in talking about vehicle dynamics. As a quick example of why this is so important, just imagine me trying to describe where this point up here on this board is, and I tell you to move five units along the kangaroo axis and three units along the zebra axis, and you're probably going to be pretty confused, and that's because I haven't told you where to start from or what the kangaroo and zebra axes are. So the, thing that, the things that we have to define are the origin of our coordinate system and what the axes, what directions they're pointing in, what those are. So let's get started with the origin here. I've uh, drawn a tire here, and this took me like 5,000 tries because I can't draw a tire like this for some reason. But we're going to draw all our, uh, the origin and the coordinate axes on this figure here. So let's start with the origin. It's located on the ground, and it's below the wheel center, and the wheel center is in the center of the wheel here and it's in the wheel plane and the wheel plane you can imagine if you take this wheel and you squish it down into a single plane that's where the wheel plane is it sits in the center of the left and the right of the wheel so if it's on the ground we're in the footprint of the tire here that's this dashed area we're below the wheel center so we know we're somewhere in here we're below the wheel center and we're in the wheel plane so we can draw and it'll turn to black here. That red dot there is going to be where the origin of our coordinate system is. And now we need to define where the three axes, the X, Y, Z axes are for this tire. So the second step is to define where these axes are located. And so we'll start with the X axis and it's located along the wheel plane. So I'm going to draw these axes with, uh, with this marker here in red. And it's located along the wheel plane. So we'll draw it something like this. That's the x-axis. The z-axis is normal to the ground, uh, so it's pointing up down like this. And so I can draw the z-axis something like this. And then the y-axis, since we're talking about, we're not talking about a curvilinear, curvilinear coordinate system, we're talking about a, a Cartesian coordinate system where all the axes are mutually perpendicular or orthogonal, then the y has to be mutually orthogonal to both the x and the z planes. And the x and the z planes, you can see here, form that wheel plane plane. And so this will be coming out, if I can draw this correctly, you can imagine this in sort of 3D space here, that this is coming out of the side of the tire on both sides. Now, we need to know where the positive directions are, and so if we look at the X direction, the positive X direction is when the tire's rolling forward. So we'll say that it's rolling forward in this case, so it's rolling this way. And that means that the positive X direction in blue here will be drawn like this. The Z direction will be drawn down as positive. I'm following the SAE axis system. Uh, I think the ISO axis system might be uh, reversed for both the, uh, for the Z axis and then by definition by the Y axis as well, but I'm going for the SAE axis system because that's what I'll be doing my videos in relation to. Uh, so the Z axis is going to be down, positive. So that'll be the Z axis. And then the Y axis is from the right hand rule, so if we, uh, this is a little bit more difficult because we're talking about the X and Z axis. Usually when you're talking about the X and Y axis, you push the X axis to the Y axis and your thumb points in the direction of the Z axis. We have to be a little bit more careful here where it'll actually be the Z axis pointing, pushing, we're pushing the Z axis to the X axis and our thumb is going to give the positive Y axis. So if we push that Z axis to the X axis, my thumb's pointing out of the page. So this here, right here, is going to be our positive y-axis like that. And you can see that if we switch the z uh, as being from down to up here, you can see that we'll be pushing the z to the x, and that means that the y-axis will be switched and, and will actually be pointing into the page. So that's why those two axes will switch. But this is how the SAE standard uh, is defined. So that defines the SAE tire axis system, but I'm going to go through an example of why these uh, definitions of these coordinate axes are important. And the first thing that will come up is that uh, if we're talking about slip angles, the way that the tires produce their forces and moments, um, the major the major way that they produce that is with a slip angle. So if you turn your wheel while you're going in a certain direction, and these will produce certain plots of lateral force versus slip angle, for example. And the easiest way to read these plots, or you'll be confused if you if you look at these plots, if you don't understand uh, what is positive, what produces a positive lateral force based off of a positive or negative slip angle. So we'll talk about that. Before we can talk about the lateral force versus slip angle plot, it would be nice to know what the forces are and what their positives are defined as. So let's first talk about 
forces. F sub x is the longitudinal force and it's positive forward, so it's positive when it's acting along the positive x direction here. Fy, or F sub y, is the lateral force, and that's what we're going to be talking mostly about when we're talking about tire forces in moments, and that is positive out to the right of the tire, so if you're looking behind the tire rolling forward, it's out to the right. Uh, the interesting one is the normal force, F sub z, and it's the load applied, it's defined as the load applied by the road to the vehicle. And it's always going to be negative because if you look at this, the uh, load applied by the road to the vehicle is going to be is going to look something like this, and that'll be our F sub z. And you can see that it adds, acts in the opposite direction of the positive z axis, which is why it's always going to be negative. And this might make more sense if you look at a free body diagram for something you might have seen in one of your physics classes, just a box sitting on the ground. And when you draw the free body diagram of this box from the center of gravity here, you can see the weight equals mg acting down, and you always uh, draw the normal force acting up because it's the load applied by the ground to the box. So that's why your uh, normal force will always be negative. And just for for completion's sake, we'll talk about moments for a second. Uh, we're going to be using the right hand rule to define what the positive moment is. So if you point your thumb in the direction of the axis, so if we're talking about the x-axis moment, or mx, um, if you point your thumb in that axis and then rotate, curl your fingers around, that will give you the positive moment. So in this case, it'll be rotating about the axis like that. That will be our mx, or in this case, the overturning moment, which you can think of as the that as the tire just falling over. M sub y, again, right hand rule, will be the driving or braking moment. And then M sub z is the aligning moment. Sometimes you'll see these, uh, these moments as torque, so driving or braking torque or aligning torque. And uh, so those define now the forces and the moments. So up here on the board, I've drawn this plot here. And on the vertical axis, you can see F sub y, and on the horizontal axis, alpha. So this is a plot of lateral force versus slip angle. And I'll go over lateral force versus slip angle and slip angles in another video. But this is just to show you how the axis system works. And the question here is, is alpha positive or negative for a right-hand turn? Turn, and what about for a left-hand turn? So this range from here to here, are we talking about a right-hand turn or a left-hand turn? And what about this range from here to here? <clears throat> and so we can figure this out by plotting a tire. Now I'm talking about an overhead view here. So we're looking overhead at a tire. This V uh, vector, that's the velocity vector, that's where the tire is currently going. And the tire is then turned uh, to provide some lateral force. And so in this case, if we're going this way and we're turning this way, you would think that the car would be trying to go right. So this is looking like it's for a right-hand turn here. And the slip angle alpha is defined as the angle between where the tire is headed and where it's pointed. So it's headed in the direction of V, and it's pointed in the direction this way. Okay, and so this is how the alpha is defined between the V and the x-axis, and then this is the y-axis here, and the lateral force is produced um, to pull the car that way because we're in a right-hand turn. Okay, so we can take this, uh, I'll take this figure and, and move it over here, and so you can see the velocity vector here, and we're saying that we're always going... Uh, we're always going in forward, we're not going in reverse here. So we have the U direction velocity, we can break this V up into components into the U direction velocity or the X direction velocity here, so we drop a perpendicular down, and then we also have the V velocity, and this is not the same as this V, this is just the Y direction velocity, and you can see it's pointing this way. And so the interesting thing is that if we define the alpha, remember we defined it as where it was, the, the angle between where it was going and where it was pointed, so this is the alpha angle, we can define it in terms of uh, U and V here, and if you look at the triangle here, we have the tangent, or the opposite over adjacent, so opposite, which is the same as V over adjacent, which is U. So the tangent of alpha is equal to V over U, and if we take, uh, if we solve for alpha, we get the inverse tangent of V over U. And so what this means is that the slip angle takes the sign of V, because we're always assuming forward motion, so we're assuming that U is always positive. And if you look at a plot of the inverse tangent of X, this is what it looks like. It looks something like this, which means that if this term in here is positive, alpha will be positive. So if the X is positive, that inverse tan will be positive. And similarly, if this term in here is negative, alpha will be negative. If this term is negative, alpha will be negative. And so what this means then is that for this, we know it's a right-hand turn, we have V, which is pointing in the opposite, the Y direction. So that means that V is negative. That means for a right-hand turn, we have a negative slip angle. And you can see here that we have a negative slip angle 
but the lateral force that's produced is pointing in the positive y direction. So you can see up here, if we have a negative slip angle, we're on this side of this axis, and it's producing a positive yf, so that's why the data is up here in this quadrant, and so this here is for a right-hand turn. So this is for a right-hand turn. Now just as a sanity check, let's check the other turn condition, the left-hand turn. So over here, I've drawn the same thing, similar overhead view. We're going this way, but the tire is now pointed this way, which means we're trying to turn left. And you can see the alpha is again defined as the angle between where the tire is going, where it's pointed. So with the positive x direction here, it's alpha. And the left turn will produce a lateral force towards the inside here, f sub y. And if we move this over here, you can see we break up the velocity vector into components. We have u and v, alpha is defined the same way. And again, still, this triangle means that the tangent of alpha is equal to v over u, or alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of v over u. But now if you look at this, the alpha, you can see the positive y-axis here, the v is in the same direction as y, so it's positive, which means that our slip angle will be positive here. So that means we're on this side here, we're on the positive slip angle side here. But that also means that when you're looking at the f sub y, the lateral force here, you can see it's pointed in the opposite of the uh, positive y axis, which means you're gonna get a negative, a negative lateral force, which is why this now goes down into this quadrant down here. And so this was just an introduction to the tire axis system, why it's important, and how to understand plots based off of the results from that tire axis system. I'll be posting some more videos about these topics like lateral force and slip angle and stuff, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching.